tonight. It was a case that couldn't be cracked for three long years. Aruba police claimed they couldn't make a case against Judge's son, Jorn Vandersloot. But tonight, a reporter does what the entire Aruban government couldn't or wouldn't do. Crack the case of 18-year-old Alabama girl Natalie Holloway, missing from a high school senior trip to Aruba 2005. Months of high-tech secret surveillance solves the mystery and proves what happened the night Holloway disappeared. After a stunning video confession caught on tape, investigators re-interrogate Vandersloot, last seen with Natalie Holloway. Was Holloway thrown into choppy ocean waters late that night, still alive? Vandersloot's defense? He claims he was high on pot when he confessed. Blabbing to his buddy literally for days tonight. The deadline for a judge's panel to order the re-arrest of Vandersloot. Natalie Holloway's father, Jug Twitty, with us live. Euron Vandersloot could be re-arrested in the death of Natalie Holloway if an appeals court overturns a judge's decision. Prosecutors say the videotaped confession of Vandersloot is impressive and believe the confession is admissible in court. I've always felt, um, you know, at peace in my heart with that I knew that Natalie was with God. And I think now, after hearing Euron's full admission, I take, you can take even more peace and comfort in knowing that, you know, my prayers were answered and I needed to know what happened. After being questioned by police, Vandersloot denies involvement in Holloway's death saying he was lying and high on drugs. Natalie's stepfather, Jug Twitty, with us tonight, taking your calls live. And also tonight, a young Ohio mom, nine months pregnant with a second child, vanishes from her own home. Her two-year-old son found in dirty diapers home alone, possibly alone for days. The toddler tells police, mommy was crying, mommy broke the table, mommy's in the rug. Tonight, the baby's biological father and murder suspect, Bobby Cutts, breaks down on the stand, claiming it was all a big accident. Well, then tell me, Mr. Cutts, exactly how did the body of 26-year-old Jesse Davis end up dumped in an obscure, heavily wooded area? Former Canton, Ohio policeman testifying in his murder trial. Bobby Cutts Jr. is accused of killing Jesse Davis, his pregnant girlfriend. She was nine months pregnant and dumping her body in a park last year. Now, fighting back tears, Cutts said he didn't mean to hurt her. He testified that he swung his elbow and struck her when she wouldn't let him out of the house. I pulled my arm. I threw my elbow back. And tonight, a three-year-old toddler found alone, wandering one of the busiest malls in St. Louis. The little boy found all alone at closing time. Tonight, 48 hours have passed. Where's mommy? A three-year-old boy left alone at a mall in the St. Louis suburbs. And tonight, police say the mom is too concerned about going to jail to even talk to officers about what happened. Outstanding warrants for 28-year-old Shamika Taylor a parole violation in 2002, and a second incident involving theft. Police say the three-year-old boy appears healthy and happy and is now in protective care. A court hearing set to determine whether Taylor will regain custody. Good evening. I'm Nancy Grace. I want to thank you for being with us. After a stunning secretly taped confession, the deadline set for the arrest of prime homicide suspect in the mystery of 18-year-old Alabama girl, Natalie Holloway. Now that we've been able to hear these stunning admissions from Iran, we've been able to go back now and we can corroborate with some of the things that he's admitting to Patrick, the informant in the car. We can bring it full circle and we can go back to the very beginning because it's absolutely amazing some of the things that Iran is saying and admitting some of the, you know, even the condition that Natalie was in as he's watching her suffer. Joran was questioned in Rotterdam by at least three Aruban police investigators who flew to Holland, as well as members of the Netherlands National Police Force. 
We're told it lasted about two hours only and that Van der Sloot's lawyer was present. Jorn Van der Sloot continues to deny to investigators that he had any involvement whatsoever in Natalie's disappearance. And he is deferring to his earlier statements that he left Natalie alone on the beach that night and that the last he saw her, she was alive. And he went on further saying that during these conversations in the car with this undercover investigator, he was under the influence of marijuana, which may have led to these statements. The deadline set for the arrest of Jorn Vandersloot with us tonight, taking your calls live. Natalie's stepfather, Jug Twitty, is with us, straight out to the lines, and to John Lieberman, America's Most Wanted correspondent. John, what's the deal with the deadline? We thought for sure by Monday a decision would be made to arrest Jorn Vandersloot. Why are they dragging their tail? Yeah, we did. We got some clarity on the timeline just tonight, actually, Nancy. And now the court says that by the end of the week, they'll rule. They want to give Joran's attorney until the end of Wednesday to file any paperwork that he wants to file to show that Joran shouldn't be rearrested. So now we're told by the end of the week, there will be an answer in this matter. Question. John Lieberman, you say they wanted to allow Joran Vandersloot's attorney to file papers. Who is they? It looks like the court wanted to allow enough time for both sides to get all of their arguments in and things of that sort. So that's why this deadline has been pushed back. Out to Natalie Holloway's stepfather joining us live tonight, Jug Twitty. Jug, it, it just sounds like another delay, another delay imposed now by the courts. We've all known, we're thousands of miles away, we've known that the deadline was this week for the rearrest order to be issued. So now, why extend it? His defense lawyers don't know that. We heard uh, his defense lawyer here in the U.S. giving comments to the press on day one. Couldn't he, instead of speaking to the press, get together a legal brief? You'd, have, uh, you'd actually think they certainly would do that. And Nancy, I don't know. They've got, you know, they've got more evidence now uh, than we've ever seen before. So I have no idea why they hadn't brought him back in for questioning. You know, Jug, when all of this happened, at the very, very beginning, when Natalie didn't make that plane back to the U.S. after her high school senior trip to Aruba, you went down there. What happened when you got there, and how did the Aruban investigators treat you at that time? Well, uh, you know, after seeing the tape the other day that uh, Peter DeBreeze did, it made it a lot clearer to me as to what happened. I think that the police knew that she was not alive the second day when he did the shaking thing in, in the video. Um, you know, they questioned Beth and I the first day, second day, and then also questioned me two weeks later. And they kept asking about the, uh, the epileptic right. fits or, you know, that type of stuff. Well, you don't ask that straight out of the box. I knew there was something funny. So they knew. I think Yaron told them that probably something happened on the beach and she did this. But Von der Straten, you know, probably just wanted to cover uh, his friend's son's butt and actually just got into it early on and then it just got deeper and deeper and snowballed and they just covered every track from so, there on. So, Jug, what you're telling me is that at the very beginning, in that very first week when you went down to search for Natalie, they were asking you guys, you and Beth, her mom, is she an epileptic, does she have seizures, which goes hand in hand with the story he just told on secret video that she had a seizure and died. Absolutely. I mean, that's what, uh, to me, that, uh, and to Beth also, that just solidifies that he, he is telling the truth. Or he's sticking to a story that she died of a seizure because, Jug, I don't buy that a completely healthy girl, you're her stepfather, uh, you know her as well as anybody else, a completely healthy girl, not an epileptic, never had a seizure in her life, would have a couple of drinks at a bar and suddenly die. I, I don't buy that, but what it does prove is the story that he's telling now, he may have told police way back when, and they didn't put it in the file. 